<laughs> <laughs> Whatever you decide. Seven feast. Seven feast. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of, uh, what is it? Gift of tongues, prophecy. gift of prophecy, gift of spirits, gift of, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Some of these people be feeling like, you know what I mean? They be feeling like they, uh, what's that one that they be saying? The gift of discernment. That's the one they be saying, you know what I'm saying? I got the gift of discernment. You know what I'm saying? He said, coming up with all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Whatever gift you think you got, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watched in on the camera, to the ones that are around the world that we don't even know about at this point. No peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Mel, will you do me a favor and get my boys, tell their butt to come in here and sit down. Um, so last week we talked about, uh, talked a lot about Daniel, right? And so we looked at the book of Daniel. We looked at a few things, but we looked at the book of Daniel and, um, we saw that Daniel, uh, interpreted a dream for the king, king, uh, king of Babylon, his name is Nebuchadnezzar. So Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, but he forgot his dream, right? He told his magi magicians, not only do you need to interpret my dream for me, but I forgot it. So now you need to tell me what the dream was. They look like, man, this is a setup. Ain't no way somebody gonna tell you what your dream was. You had the dream. They look like, look, if you tell us what the dream will do, he's like, nah, I, ain't, I can't remember the dream. I lost it, but I know how y'all are. I tell you the dream and you will come up with anything, make it sound good. He is like, I'm gonna kill all y'all if y'all can't do it. Right? So everybody freaking out. And Daniel got worried, like, hold on, he'll kill us over their foolishness. So he got down, started praying to the most high God. Most high God answered his prayer and went in his sleep. He had he had the dream. He was given the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. So he went back to Nebuchadnezzar and he is like, look, let's make this clear. First of all, none of your magicians can get this thing done. Let's just let's just put that on the table. Only only us Hebrew boys are the ones that can get this done. Then after he said that, he is like, let me tell you about your dream. So he told him about the dream and then he gave him the interpretation of it. So if y'all remember, he had a dream of a big old statue. It had a gold head. It had silver chest. It had iron it had a, 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 a brass thigh, stomach or a copper stomach. Was it copper? Copper stomach. Copper right. stomach. Then he had uh, iron legs and he had iron mixed with clay on the feet. Right. And so when when we look at that, right, all of those those sections represent different empires that were coming. And he told him that that first empire, that head, the gold head, he was like, that's you. He was like, man, you the king of kings. You the one running the game. You know what I'm saying? Most High like God gave this whole thing to you, right? So he knew that. Nebuchadnezzar was aware of that at that point. So this is this is kind of like where it kick off. You have to put yourself in everybody's shoes. One, put yourself in Daniel's shoes. Your people at this same time are getting killed by Nebuchadnezzar, right? He taking over the land. He took you captive. He tried to took your mama captive, your, your boys, everybody captive. He, Nebuchadnezzar, the one who did it, he killed a bunch of your folks, right? Nevertheless, you serve him. That takes a lot of humility. You got to set yourself down and just kind of like, okay, I'm going to have to eat this, right? Then the other person, uh, shoes you got to put yourself in is Nebuchadnezzar. I'm doing this. I already feel on top of the world. Then I have this person who clearly, it clearly is backed by something special because he knew my dream and I didn't tell him my dream. Then he told me what the dream meant. And then when he told me what the dream meant, he told me that I'm running the show. So whoever this guy's God is, who clearly is powerful because he told me my dream, <laughs> he approved of me. So if you look at it from Nebuchadnezzar's mindset, he probably looking at it like, man, ain't nobody messing with me. Now I know I'm stamped. Before it was like, before it was like, I, I can whoop everybody. So it's like, I'm the guy, right? But then it's like, oh, even your God, who clearly is pop powerful, is saying that I'm the guy? Oh, can't nobody tell me nothing. Right. So keep that in mind as what we what we'll be about to read now. You kind of going to look at the next level of Nebuchadnezzar. Right. Nebuchadnezzar is kind of looking at it like I'm on top of the world now. Right. I'm on a whole different level. Nobody in the world can touch me. Right. So this is Daniel. This is chapter three of Daniel. Daniel, chapter three. Let's start at verse one. 
This is Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. Meanwhile, throughout all this time, Nebuchadnezzar is still terrorizing our place. He's still collecting taxes from us. If we get out of line, he's still jumping over there, beating our butts, killing our people. Right? All this stuff is still going on. Where's the cop? All right. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. Uh -huh. He set it in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, and sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar king had set up. So he set up a big statue. Why in the world would he set up a big statue? Why might he set up a big statue? That boy had a dream about one. He had a dream about a big statue. And when it was interpreted for him, the, the top of the statue was who? It was him. It was him. I'm the God. So now he come back and he's like, hey, oh, hear ye, hear ye. Everybody come around. You a ruler? What town you rule? Come on by, boy. You a magician? What? Get your butt over here. Everybody who can do something, come here. Around. Just circle around. Take a look at my statue. Now that's me. Right? Watch what he say next, though. The bad boy, Nebuchadnezzar. You got it. You got to understand how bad he is. Like in his mind, I'm untouchable. Right? No nation can withstand me. If I want to take your whole nation, I'm going to take it. And you can't do nothing about it. Because not only am I untouchable, but even the Hebrew God is on my side. And clearly that's the one. Think, of, like, think about the psyche. Clearly this Hebrew God got power. He probably superstitious. He believed in magicians and all that. But you got this Hebrew God who told me what my dream was and interpreted it. And it was favorable to me. It feels good to hear what he said, right? Then, you know what? I'm so bad. I, the Hebrew God let me conquer his people and he really got power. So he probably looking like even the Hebrew God can't withstand me. Right? He's probably looking at himself right now like, I might be a God. You know what I'm saying? Like, I might be that guy. I'm the king of kings. I'm the chosen one. Right? Let me build me a statue real quick. Watch him go. And the princes, the governors, and the captains, judges, and treasurers, and the counselors, and sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together until the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Mm -hmm. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Mm -hmm. Then in then a herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but psaltery, sack, but psaltery, dulcimer, and all the kings of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So he set up a golden image. Then he had somebody yell out and tell everybody this the law. When these boys start playing this music, Everybody better fall down and bow down to the image. Now he's looking at himself like, no, I'm a God now. I might be a God. That's you have to understand why he thinks that though. Right? This is not, this is not like an accident of arrogance. First of all, I have a great military mind, right? I come up. Who was running the show when I come up? Assyrians. They was they was conquering stuff when I came up. Okay, Assyrians, you know what I'm saying? They had their little implosion. They start fighting amongst themselves. Well, guess what? I'm going to come up. Then I'm going to start taking over all these nations. I took over Ammon. I took over Syria. I took over the Moabites. I took it over Edom. To do that, you have to have a great military mind. You got to know how to hit, move your men, inspire your men, and they get the job done. Like attack here because you know they're going to come out this way. You got to come around just the same way. Like you look at a, at a, at a, at a great football coach where they kind of looking at everything. They're looking like, okay. These boys tend to play the right side. We're going to play them on this side. We're going to run it. We're going to shove it down. We're going to run it down the middle on their butt because they can't defend that way. Right? And so they looking at it, and they trying to – They Nebuchadnezzar is kind of like picking out his spots. He's looking like, oh, we can take that nation. This is how we got to do it. So in his mind, man, can't nobody mess with me on this battlefield. Right? Then after that, I take the Hebrews. Everybody was talking about the Hebrew. These are the boys that they got took them out of Egypt. That stuff probably fake. What did he do for them lately? Man, I'm about to take their butt, right? I take the Hebrews. He took the Hebrews next. And after he took the Hebrews, 
he had one of the Hebrews tell him they dream after all his magicians came. And the Hebrew God is telling him he's the king of kings. All this stuff is given into his hand. And I just took over this God's people. In his mind, even this God who truly has power can't stop me. Man, let me go ahead and build me a little statue. You know what I'm saying? Let me build something. Y'all better bow down to it too because I'm him. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And whosoever falls not down and worship shall be the same hour cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Right? So listen, if you don't worship Nebuchadnezzar, you got to burn in the fire. What that sound like? Sound like hell, don't it? Because we, we serve a king of kings. And if we don't worship our king of kings, where are we going to end up being? In the fire. Book trying to tell you something right now. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Let's learn a little bit. A lot of people don't know about Nebuchadnezzar. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack butt, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people and nations, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. He don't care what, what, what nation you're from and what language you You better sit your butt down. You better bow down. You better serve that darn uh, golden uh, statue. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused, <laughs> and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Mm -hmm. And whosoever falls not down and worships that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. You got to go to hell if you don't worship. There are certain Jews who Ain't nobody going to teach y'all this stuff. These people don't know who Nebuchadnezzar was. They looking at Nebuchadnezzar, they think, oh, that's the king of Babylon. That's Yahushua the Messiah we reading about. You think, what other, what other man the Most High God set out and said, you the king of kings? Told him out, Most High God told him out of his own mouth, you the king of kings. Y'all think y'all reading about Nebuchadnezzar. Keep going, watch this. You don't bow down to the man, you got to go burn in the fire. And the Most High God stamped that. Y'all think y'all reading about Nebuchadnezzar. We ain't done. Watch this. Keep going. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh -huh. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. Mm -hmm. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Mm -hmm. Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? All right, so these are Daniel's boys. These are the ones he came up with. These are the ones he went into captivity with, right? So Nebuchadnezzar, mad, like, man, what y'all think y'all did? Y'all embarrassing me out here. Y'all don't serve me? Y'all don't serve my idol? Watch this. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack butt, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast that same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. And who is it that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? He asked the question, what God is going to deliver you out of my hand? If I put you in the burning fire, who is going to save you? His mindset right now is nobody can withstand me. Yo, God came and said, nothing. I talked to your God already. He told you who I was. Why is y'all playing with me? Watch what happened. He about to put these boys in the fire too. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Mm -hmm. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Look, and look, hey, look. When he say we're not careful, what he telling them is this thing don't bother us at all to answer. This. You know what I'm saying? You look, you asking me, look, these boys so bad, they looking at Nebuchadnezzar's face, right? Nebuchadnezzar, it's the king, just conquered their whole nation, got the whole, got all the people bowing down to his image. He told them, looking at him in the face, oh, so y'all ain't going to obey my commandment? Y'all ain't going to bow down to my statue? Don't you know that if you don't bow down to my statue, I'm going to put you in this fire? Look. He said, what God is going to save you? 
Them boys looked them square in the face and said, oh, this thing don't bother us at all to give you that answer. We are not careful at all to give you. Listen, this thing, we ain't even worried about giving you this answer. Our God, oh, he'll save us. That's not even what they said. Read it. Watch. They, I want y'all to see what they said because this is the type of faith we got to have. That's not what they said. Watch what they said. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire and furnace. He didn't say our God will save us. That's what I just said. That's my mouth talking. What the book said is our God is what? If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning if fire. If you put us in there, he can, he can save us if he wants to. He's able to save us. They ain't say he will. We might die. That don't change nothing about what, how we behave in though. We might get thrown in this fire and we might die. But rest assured, if my God wanted to, though, he got us. That's a different level of faith. We be trying to hype ourselves a lot of time like stuff is going to go the way we want. God, oh, I know God is going to protect me. And I know God. No, that's not the mindset. That's not the mindset. I might get my head blown off messing with these white folks. They might put they might put all type. I might try to save just helping out our kids. They might put all types of stuff against me, just working against the working, working with these kids, working with our kids, or working with working with our people. I'm not gonna say, oh no, no, no. Well, you know, God is gonna protect me. He's gonna make sure I'm pristine. He's gonna make sure ain't no rumors gonna get again. He's gonna make sure, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody shoot me, don't nobody beat me up, don't know. That can't be my mindset. My mindset gotta be, I know he's able to do it. Nevertheless, that don't change how I'm moving at all. And we got to be like them when we get an answer. Oh, that thing don't bother me a bit to answer you this question. I ain't shaking about it. I ain't even super thoughtful. That thing don't bother me. I've been waiting for you to ask. Watch this. Keep going. These are bad boys, man. I'm telling you. We ain't got, we've never, we haven't seen it. Including me, right? We haven't seen this level of faith. We haven't seen this level of like, like I'm standing on what God give me and that's it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not moving. Y'all can't get me to move. Y'all can't get me to do now. I don't care who, who, who like it, who don't like it. These are the most uncool people in the town. It's three of them. And it's nations of people all doing the same thing. They all looking at this boy like, y'all stupid. Just bow down to it. Y'all going to sit here and let y'all sell. Y'all going to get thrown in the fire just because you don't bow. It, if it don't mean nothing to you, just bow down to it. Who cares? Whether you bow down or not, it don't mean nothing. But in their mind, it mean a lot. It's against my law. Care nothing with it. Nothing mean nothing to these people. We can't base what we do off of these people. These people curl and fake and, 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 and hypocrite over anything. You throw a little bit of money at these people and they, they out of here. Listen. You... You have people who are in New York City, all over Trump, by the way, right? They make a whole law for Trump, for people, for women to come out and blame and, and accuse Trump of sexual harassment, right? They make this law. They say, you know what? We're going to open it up in New York City to where no, no matter how long ago it was, no statute of limitation, you can sue him civilly. Right. And then these people pop out and they make the accusations in doing that. A lot of other people start making accusations. So that's why you see in the news, you got P. Diddy and Jamie Foxx. And, and it's a few it's a few white people, too. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's caught up in all these accusations about these civil suits. These are people. It's a, it's a male, too. Right. These are people that waited years. Years in the music industry and in the inter entertainment industry waited years to say something about what happened to them. So then we ask ourselves, why? Like, why would you wait that long? Right? And the empathetic person in you looks at it and be like, man, that's a hard industry. I mean, what if you get fired? What if somebody, what if you lose your life? You worked hard for your position at your job and your boss, there's a power dynamic there. Your boss, if you don't do what he won't, I mean, he can fire you. So then you let somebody play with you and you let somebody take away your womanhood or your manhood and, and compromise your, your morals. 
based off of what you expect for them to do for you. And we as a culture are scared to put the accountability shared a share of the accountability on the person who allows these things to happen. Because you know what? You can't, you know what they call it? Victim shaming. Can't victim shame. Like I can't say nothing about the girl who 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 dress a certain way that attracts the rapist. Because at the end of the day, she should be able to dress how she wants to do. The rapist shouldn't be raping. Right? That's the mindset that they put us in. But no, that's not realistic. That's not real. He shouldn't be raping and she shouldn't be advertising and, and attracting any of this energy as a kid. Right. You as a as a as an entertainer, you should not be in this entertainment trading the the allure that you have. Right. Just because, you know, that this guy be sexually attracted to you and vice versa for a guy. The, the accountability has to be on both sides, but it's because the morals of our people, they we compromise everything. Now it's seen as acceptable to say, you know what? Hey, I know I got this position because I'm pretty and because my boss likes me. But only that's OK. But only when my bo boss acts on that, that's when it becomes the issue. We can't all have it both ways. We have to have enough to say, you know what? There is nothing. In this world, that's worth me compromising what I have with God. That's why when you look at our law, our law say what about rape? You can get put to death. The you man gotta, who do it gonna get put to death. And what about gotta, the girl? The woman gotta cry out. Let him let let the priest know. If she don't that's cry that. out, guess what that is? It's consensual. That's fornication. Huh? According to our law, our law puts the accountability on both sides. Don't your but rape. And if he do it, cry out. Now, if you hold on to that thing, well, I thought he might have fired me. This, that, and other. That was consensual. Then you made a, you made a decision. You made a choice. You say, you know what? I'd rather deal with what comes to this, that with this act, than lose my job. So now your job is more important than your righteousness. That can't be us. That's these people. They compromise on everything. That's just one. That's a big example. But that's one example how the world has us viewing this constant compromise and having sympathy for a compromise. And I'm talking about adults, right? I ain't talking about kids. You know what I'm saying? You mess with kids, you are you die to death. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about adults. When adults make those decisions, that that is a compromise that you're making. Right? And we do that constantly in our society. So that's why you got to look at it and you got to say, I don't care what these people think of me. I don't care if everybody is bound down to this statue. What that mean for me? Oh, uh, oh, we got grab, uh, grab, uh, grab, uh, grab, uh, Exodus chapter 23, verse one. Give me Exodus chapter 23, verse one. Then we coming right back. I wish I had some water. What's all right? Give me some water, man. What's going on? Oh, that, oh, get, oh, getting me some water is too much to ask. You just so busy all day. Huh? That's the only boy that loved me in here. I don't know what's wrong with you. Oh, and I get a thumbs up at that. That's crazy. That's nuts. That's crazy. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Look at this. He said, don't raise a false report. Don't put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Watch this. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. This is our law. He said, thou shalt not what? Follow a multitude to do evil. So now, if I'm Shadrach, I'm Meshach, and a bad Negro, right? <laughs> and I stand here and I say, I say, okay, listen, I see everybody bound down to this statue. Everybody is bound down to the statue. Guess what law pop in my mind? Read it again. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. That don't make no darn sense. It don't make no darn sense. Just because there's a multitude doing it, guess what? That don't mean it's right for me. That has to be our mindset. That's our law, first of all. But that has to be our mindset. Y'all can't be looking at y'all kids. Y'all can't be looking at just what everybody doing and just be like, okay, well, since I saw it on TikTok a lot, I might as well do it. Some of this stuff be evil. You got to look at it and be like, nah, we good. And then take it. That, that stuff ought to give you, it should make you proud. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what? I'm standing up for my God. 
I'm the only one doing this. It take a while, but that stuff make me proud now. You know what I'm saying? I'll be sitting there. I love, I love telling these folks no. You know what I'm saying? Well, why don't you just nope? You know what I'm saying? They be looking at, look, especially around this time, they be coming to my desk with all this stuff. Like, you know, I just really appreciate you. You do so much for our department. It is really great. I know you don't celebrate Christmas, so I put it in a green bag, but I didn't put anything on it about Christmas. Just call it a New Year's gift. <laughs> they be, they be coming. I be imagining that they practice their speech before they walk over to me. Like, I know he's going to know, but how do I say it to him in a way? So I, I enjoy it. I'll be like, bring it on. Bring it on. No. <laughs> no. No. You know what I'm saying? Then you, no. You know what I'm talking about? Just line their butt up. Until they bring me like food, I'll be like, all right, get the Christmas stuff off of it. Give me that cake. You know what I'm saying? Like, they put the food, they still give me with the food. Now, you know what I'm saying? You make some good food. I'll be like, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? That thing look good. This girl brought banana pudding. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Banana pudding ain't never been a Christmas dish. You know what I'm saying? Bring, bring that thing over here. You know what I'm saying? Set that thing on the desk. You know what I'm saying? Put it in a little cup for me. That thing bomb, too. But they bring these little gifts. They know I like red wine. They brought the red wine in there. I was looking like, can't do it. Can't do it. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Look at them. But that's what they do. They try to get you to compromise. They be sitting there heartbroken too. But I mean, but I'm. it's not for Christmas. But I mean, I know. I get it. Go ahead and keep it though. I appreciate you. No, I do. I really do appreciate the thought. Go ahead and keep it. In they mind, they act, what's the big deal? Like, what's the big deal? I know it ain't a big deal to you. It is for me. And guess what you teach them? They don't know it, but guess what you're teaching them? It's a big deal. You got to consider some things when you're talking to me. I want you to sit there and practice your speech for me. Bring it over here. That thing made me proud. Like, yeah, I'm standing up for my darn God. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is. Ain't nobody doing it. Ain't nobody doing it. But even if it's only three of us, right? We can't be bound down to their idols. We can't be bound down. We can't be doing the little silly stuff that they're doing. Not when that stuff conflict with us and our God. We can't just because a multitude doing it, just because everybody doing it, just because people we love, just because, man, that stuff, man. We got to separate ourselves from these people. And it's power in that. But these people think it's power ain't power. Who y'all think is powerful that's black? Martin Luther King. You thought he was powerful? What made him powerful? He was powerful, though. But what made him powerful? Black Panther. He just made him proud talking. Now, he is a very wise man, is what made him powerful. He was powerful. What they have to do to him, though? How they kill him? How they kill him, though? Right. It popped him in his darn head. Right? And I ain't going to say whether Martin Luther King was a righteous man or not. I know he was wise. He was a wise, very wise man. I ain't going to say he, whether he is a righteous man or not. But as a righteous man, you take that. If you're a righteous man, you doing you, you take that. You got to kill me. That should be the mind. What do you think they saying right now? Go back. What do you think they saying when they when Nebuchadnezzar is asking them, oh, so you're not going to obey my law? I'll put you in this fire. What God do you think going to save? And their response is, oh, look, let me tell you something. <laughs> that thing, listen, I ain't, even, I ain't even anxious about giving you an answer to this. <laughs> if it's so be, my God is able to save us. What do you think they saying? You're going to have to kill me. You're going to have to do it. We think we hard with everything, boy. I'm going to tell you something. This Bible stuff worked for me. Transition out of the lifestyle I was living, that thing worked for me. Worked for me. I didn't stood, look, for, for absolutely nothing, I didn't stood eye to eye with guns. Telling people that, man, forget it. Tell them, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to do it. For nothing. There was no, I wasn't doing it for nothing. With no money behind it. With no real loyalty behind it. It was just silly individual pride. Now I got something I can really do it for? Oh, please. And ain't nobody pointing no gun at me right now. They might. But right now they not pointing a gun at me. That's easy money. Easy money. What you going to do? Fire me? You're going to have to do it then. You're going to have to do it. What you going to do? You going to attack me? You going to run in my house? You know what I'm saying? You're going to try to scare me. Ooh. You're going to stop me from buying a house. 
You're going to have to do it. You have to do all that. You're going to try to put some lies on me. You're going to have to do all that. All of it. Do it. Let's see who wins. You better do it good, too. Let's see who wins because I'm consistent. I'm not moving. I'm standing on what I'm standing on. We're going to do it. I ain't scared of none of this. There's nobody. There's What I'm going to be scared of, I got God on my side. That's a different level of peace. When you know you serve God and you believe that God is able to save you from whatever. So now you know if it happened, that's exactly how it was meant to happen. If I get thrown in this fire and I burn up, that's exactly how it was supposed to happen. These boys ain't worried about that stuff. You took me out of my hometown. You took me out of Israel. You took me from my land. You stole my darn people. Do me a favor and put me in there. I don't want to be here anyway. What's wrong with y'all? I'm in the land of my darn captivity and you talking to me like you crazy. Talking to me like I should be bound down to your stuff. Well, go ahead and do it. I'm going to serve my God. Put me in there. Win-win for me. If I die, good. I ain't got to be in your land. And if I live, ha! Told you my God would do it. Let's keep reading. These bad, these are bad boys. These are the people we ought to look up to. He's looking up to these, these weird old boy. These boys looking up to, uh, What's his name? What's a what's a what's a uh, what's the rapper name? Y'all know him. They be looking up the blue face. Yeah, y'all blue face ain't cool, right? He got a song called Left Right. No, I don't y'all don't do that to my wife now. She ain't quite as hip as me. Blue face song is is Tatiana. That is what it is. Oh, you thought I didn't know what a thought was, huh? I told you I'm cooler than y'all. No, who's who's the one? Who's the other rapper? Young rapper, rap stupid the stuff baby. all the time. No, nah, not the baby. Yeah. Who? Lil Uzi Vert. Oh, it, yeah. They be looking up the NBA young boy a little Lil bit too. Mama. But he, uh, I ain't never heard of him. Who? He knew? What's the other one? He from Chicago. <laughs> 21 Savage? <laughs> Trash. Dirt. Dirt. They be looking up the little dirt. You know what I'm saying? Who's that? Little, little dirt. 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 Oh. Trash. You know what I'm saying? All my life. All my life. All my life. You know what I'm saying? All my life. You know what I'm saying? Them yeah, boys, boys trickity. You know what I'm saying? Trap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Them boys suck. But you know what I'm saying? That's what we look up to. We look at that and be like, oh yeah, dirt. He got it. He got a song with Jid too. Brother them, that song type. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? What they say? He stand on business. Oh, you thought I didn't know? Y'all thought I didn't know? Oh, they be thinking I don't know. I be knowing. <laughs> you better believe I stand on business. Stand on Bible business, boy. <laughs> All right, so I, now you about to get knocked out. I stick with our <laughs> stick with our lingo, huh? I stick with our lingo. I'm good on what these kids say. Yeah, nah. But uh, but nah, you, we we look up to the we look up to the rappers are to the you got the older you know what I'm saying people around my age they infatuated with Kanye West like oh he's it just speaks truth speaks truth Kanye West he, he tell the Jews like it is you know like hey, he's a hypocrite hypocrite he talk all that mess about the Jews guess what he did. He deleted his whole Twitter page, right? And then in 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 they Hebrew, they version of Hebrew, he put a, a long apology in their language. That's the only post on his page now. You know what I'm saying? Just apologize for all that. What do you think? They just shake the boy out. They shake the boy out and he break because he he's not. It's not principled. All this stuff to be selfish. You know what I'm saying? And when you when you make moves out of like just selfish, or you just looking out for yourself, or you trying to be an opportunist, that stuff gonna crumble one day. I ain't standing on nothing. The people we should be looking at are these boys. Look at these boys. Watch, keep going. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Yep. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. That's what they're saying is they're going to have to kill me. That's what he's saying. You're going to have to kill me. He said, listen. He able to serve, but even if he don't, just let it be known, I'm still not serving none of your gods. That's crazy to me. All right? Keep going. Watch this. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the form of his viziers was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was 
want to be heated. They said, he said, usually y'all put a couple logs in that thing. No, no, no. Do it seven times the amount of logs y'all usually do. Heat that thing up for these boy. These boy about to burn today. Watch this. Keep going. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and mm -hmm. cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. That's right. Then these men were bound in their coats. When he said bind, he said tying up. So you tie them up, right? So he tied them up and then he put them into the furnace, right? And he heated that thing up seven times hotter than what it usually is. So he put them in there. It's a whole bunch of fire. He threw them in there and he bound them up. So in other words, they tied up, right? Watch this. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Why? Rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors. Watch this. Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? Nebuchadnezzar asked the question. He said, hey, how many people we cast in there? Didn't, wasn't it three? I could have swore we only cast three boys in there, right? Watch what they say. They answered and said unto the king, true, O king. Yeah, yeah, we only did three. They checked the records. Nebuchadnezzar, was he looking? Nebuchadnezzar, he was mad. The, when they say the visage changed, he, his face changed. He was like this at first, like, like, so y'all really think y'all not about to bow down when that's my law? Don't y'all know I put y'all in this fire? What God going to save y'all? They respond. They looking like, well, if it's so be, our God is able to save us. But I mean, even if he don't, though, we never bowing down to your stuff. So Nebuchadnezzar was like, his visage changed. So his face, what? What? Light that thing up right now. Go seven times hotter. Get you. Or you ain't going to bow down? Okay. Seven times hotter. Bind these boys up. Tie them up. Get y'all butts in there. So you imagine somebody that's that hot, that mad, waiting to see that vengeance to like burn their butts up. He watching the whole time. So he looking, probably looking through the thing because it's seven times hot. He probably ain't going to get too close. That thing too hot. So he watching it. He looking at it. He like, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So he look. Three people get thrown in there. And so he check back in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He come back, probably go get him a little bit of water. You know what I'm saying? Because it's hot. He yelling and all that. So he get a little water. He come back. Look at it. Like how them boys doing in there? And he looking, he looking like, didn't we, didn't we throw three boys in there? He's like, yeah, that, check the record. Let me see. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, three, only three. You know what I'm saying? He looking like, then what'd he say? And he answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. I see four of them boys in there. And them boys walking around like it ain't no problem. Right? And the fourth one looked like, well, he looked like he come from out of this world. When he say son of God, that's talking about what we would think of as like an angel. Right? They like, man, that fourth one, that boy looked like it's something to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? Keep going. Watch this. Then Nebuchadnezzar came there to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No, he, came to the, he came to the mouth. He's like, hey, yo! Hey, uh, boys, you know what I'm saying? Watch this. Keep going. Ye servants of the most high God, come forth and come here. What he call them now? He said, you servants of what? The most high God. Now think about it from his point of view. He goes to conquer Israel, conquer Judah, rather. Right? You got to imagine that we tell them like, man, we serve the most high God. You can't get us. Right? Then all of a sudden, he gets us. Then he takes Daniel and the three other boys. Right. Daniel interprets this dream for him. He says the most high God, Yahuwah, is the one giving it to you. He's like, OK, so that means that I'm on top of the world and even Yahuwah can't stop me because I just conquered his people. OK, great. Then he builds this statue and these same boys get thrown in the fire. And they alive walking around. And it's a fourth one that looked like he one of the sons of God. So now his tune changed a little bit. Yo, yo, yo you servants of the most high God. Well, you know what I'm saying? Why don't y'all talk to me real quick? Let's see what he said. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the kings and counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power, mm -hmm. nor was a hair on their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation and Look, language. He said, therefore, the original decree, if you don't bow down to my stuff, you burn. But then after that, 
I make a decree that any people, what? Nation and language which speak anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. If you are weak and if you are scary and if you fold every time there's pressure of a lot of people saying something about you or, or, trying, or threatening to do something against you, right? You never get to see nothing like this. You will never get to see nothing like this to see a king who run the entire world who look at your God like he chump. I just took your God. Your God people, I just took them. The whole people. Your God just gave me the wing, just told me I'm the one. I'm the man. I built my own statue. Now that same guy come back and be like, yo, 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 I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. Okay, for sure. This is what we're going to do. New decree. Y'all say something about his God, I'm chopping y'all up and putting y'all on the pile. Because I ain't never seen nobody do nothing like that. So now this king that was elevated by our God to be the top of the world now gives glory to our God and enforces it across the world. Y'all ain't got, we don't have leaders that are do this for us. We don't have nobody that to stand and do this for us. You know why? Because everybody weak and scary and we look for any moment to compromise. We look for any moment to just be like, you know what? It ain't that big of a deal. How about let's make it a big deal? Even if it ain't a big deal, let's make it a big deal. Let's just be stubborn. We stubborn with everything else. Everything else, we ready to fight and cry and, 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 and rebel and do whatever about. We ready to do that with everything except for the most high God word. Somebody say something to us at our job. We be like, I know, I know she didn't talk to me that way. It be nothing. Little stuff. It's the principle of the matter. Nobody should be able to speak to me that way. And it be little stuff we be tripping over. I didn't even say, look, in my job, she didn't even say good morning to me. That thing is super. And, but we hold on to that thing. <laughs> if you, every morning, every morning we work together, I walk by you, you don't say good morning. <laughs> every morning. It just so happens. I'm walking way. by you. I look you in your eye. I mean, it's smiling at you. Yeah. I used to say good morning to you first, but you don't be saying it to me. So now I just smile at you and let me see if you're going to say it first. Okay. All right. That's again. He didn't say it. So now I'm telling Deborah. Deborah, no, I don't mess. I don't mess with Susie because Susie boys. every morning, Susie don't say nothing to me. Them old folks got on my head for not saying good morning. When oh I was no, like, they don't play that stuff. When I was like 19, keep messing with them old folks. <laughs> they was like they got on my head. They don't. They don't play that. So you better say. I remember they used to pull me because you know I'm anti. So I don't be wanting to talk to nobody. I just be looking, moving through. Like mm, don't even want to make eye contact with you. I'm trying to get to my desk and work. They be looking at me like, you know. A little good morning. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm looking like, I heard that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I heard that. I ain't thinking about y'all people. You know what I'm saying? But all right. Good, well, good morning. You know what I mean? <laughs> good darn morning. It's a big deal for them. Now, how big is a good morning? What does it do? You say good morning. You don't say good morning. What does it change in the day? If, look, if I don't tell you good morning, is your morning bad? Well, look at that. Complete vanity. But guess what? These old folks will stand on business when they come to that good morning. Oh, fuck. They got me. They got me thinking that they grew down. It because because we make certain things a big deal. I think it's a big deal where we where I come from. It's a big deal. Go tell your family. Um, you know, I I just I'm not gonna do Thanksgiving this year. Just tell them. I mean, just tell them. I'm, I'm not gonna do Thanksgiving this year. What? Thanksgiving. It's fin or Christmas, right? I'm not going to do Christmas. What? This is what we do every year. This is family. It's a big deal. You know what they used to tell us when we first, when we, when me and Tasha first got married and we was like, uh, our kids, no tooth fairy, no Christmas, no Halloween. We not going to do none of the foolishness, right? You know what the people, remember, baby, you remember what they used to tell us? They used, to, they used to accuse us. They said, you are robbing your child of, at this time, he only had one. You are robbing your child of their childhood. That thing set on me because I'm looking like, I had to go back. You know, I had to act tough in their face. Man, I ain't listening to that stuff. But then you go home and you think about it like, dang, that's heavy. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if I am? Like, what if my kid, because in your mind, this is what happened. 
This is what I imagined when they said that to me. I just imagined my kid on Christmas Day wearing a all black with a black hoodie, sitting in his room like this. You know what I'm saying? Sitting there depressed, sad. Like everybody got presents and I don't. In my mind, that thing looked bad. I'm like, man, you're gonna go to jail over this stuff. This is child abuse. Right? Ask my kids if they care about a darn Christmas. The only one you might get something out of the Mayala. You know what I'm saying? I ain't finished indoctrinating her yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the other one, you know what I'm saying? They ain't think about that mess. They be up here telling these kids, like, nah, Santa ain't real. They almost kicked out of school over that foolishness. Like, man, stop telling these kids. You know what I'm saying? Let these kids believe in what they want to believe. What was that? What was that mom on the <laughs> that mom on the thing on your uh Facebook thing, was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, like, I'd have been like, I'd have pappy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd have pappy. That was my boy. That was my boy that told you that. You know, good on. Like, you know what I'm saying? She was like, don't ruin good it for on. the rest. She was like, don't ruin it for my kids. Have your kids not ruin it for my kids. It's a big say. deal. That stuff is a big deal for them. Right? But it's not a big deal because it's really a big deal. It's a big deal because they made it a big deal. So what I'm saying is, if these people have all the license to make all this stupid stuff a big deal for them, why we can't make something that means something a big deal? Right? Why we can't say, you know what? Mm. You wear a cross? No, I don't wear anything. I think it's crazy to wear a cross. Why that can't be a big deal for us? They be like, oh, it's not a big deal. You wear a cross. It's not like I'm worshiping the cross. No, 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 it is to me. It's a big deal. Sorry. Right? When does God become a big deal? When Yah is a big deal, this is what you get. He got, a, he got an opportunity to be like, ah, now I'm going to show y'all something. Are you willing to go into the flames for me? Oh, goodness. Let me show y'all something now. <laughs> I'm going to send somebody. Yo, yo, yo. We got any angels? Y'all, you busy? Run down there real quick. Unbound them boys. Just walk around. Have some tea with them boys in the flames. You know what I'm saying? They, you over there walking around. I like to imagine them boys just walking around like, man, look. You know what I'm saying? In the middle of the flame. Like, no, I'm telling you. No, did you see the statue? They look crazy anyway. They just in there talking. Right? Nebuchadnezzar looking like, didn't we put three in there? I see four. Right. That's what the most high God is looking for. He's scanning books. say he's scanning left and right, up and down, all over earth, looking for somebody to show his power through. We did all we got to do is do what we supposed to do and be unapologetic. We shouldn't have to apologize for what we believe. These people believe, you know what I'm saying? These people believe silly stuff. These people, these people, these people believe they said they say the DNA of a banana. Is about 87% the same as a human. Right? That's what they said, right? So then in their mind, you're closer to a banana than you are to whatever. So they think you came from a banana. In their mind. Right? And they 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 believe this stuff. This stuff is in, in all of our kids' science books. This stuff is in this stuff is in everywhere on TV. They even got these Christian pastors talking about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, no, scientifically, it's not possible that the world is more than, you know what I'm saying, less than 10,000 years old. I mean, the world is very old, you know, and it's that no scientifically, you know what I'm saying? I've read it in scientific books. Very clear carbon dated, you know, if you look at the carbon dating, it's clear that the world's been here billions, billions of years. <sighs> and they believe it. Billions of, like, that's like a big stretch. Show me somebody that got a billion year old calendar. That ain't crazy. You have no evidence that the world been here for billions of years, but they believe it, and we supposed to feel stupid for what we believe. We the only ones left. We got the stuff that make the most sense, got the most evidence, got the most documentation around it. The most people they built their whole calendar. They where they get the seven day week from? They got that from our book. They can give you look. They got science for everything else. Well, the sun, you know, we we do a full rotation around the sun. That's a year. Right? And the earth does a full rotation. That's a day. And then the moon is where originally the month came from, right? So the moon goes around, right? That's a month. Right? When it completes its full cycle. All this stuff, you can break it down oh. scientifically. You don't need no Bible <coughs> for it. Tell me about the week. Where they get a week from? Where they get a seven day week from? Mm, let me guess. Y'all made the world in seven days. Six days. In, I mean, in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. 
That's the only place you get a week from. They got that stuff from us. The whole division of eight years, B.C. and A.D. Before Christ. And B.C. Christ. represents before Christ. After In other Christ. words, beside, uh, before the Messiah. And then A.D. represents, after. it's, it's uh, Latin for the year of our Lord. I thought it was after death, after his death. That, no, that, that, that's a different way that people say it, but it really is like Anno Domone or something mm. like that. But it, it's, it means the year of our Lord. Right? It's talking about the year that Yahushua was born. Now they try to say before common era. It's like, stop fronting. They got, they got to try to change it. Yeah. The whole division of time is based off of our book. And we let these people play in our face and tell us, ah, oh, you guys are stupid for believing this book. You stupid too then. To hear, man, I don't, I don't let these people bully me into believing whatever. You know what I'm saying? That stuff is crazy. You examine and just take a practical mindset of what these people be talking about in their science book. This stuff is ridiculous. It's grade A ridiculous stuff. And they can't prove a lick of it. They just going to throw a whole bunch of big old words at you and talk about all these great men that, that did all this research that you should trust. Okay, well, I got a lot of other great men I trust. You trust your great men. I trust mine. But let's call it even. Don't try to make me feel stupid. We both just as stupid for believing the people that we believe. Let's see how I play out in the end. People can't bully me. Is that the end of the chapter? Keep going. Let's go to the end. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Talk to me about how old the earth is. Now I got a whole book that tells me. Y'all see it? Yeah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. I want to show y'all something. This is Isaiah chapter 14. Maybe I want to start at what, what verse 4? <sighs> verse 6, maybe. This is Isaiah chapter 14. Four. This is Isaiah chapter 14. This is verse 4. Watch what the book say. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and right? say. He said that take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Now, notice who we're talking about. We're talking about Isaiah. King of Babylon, the king that we're talking about starts right here, right? Nebuchadnezzar, that's him, right? He started right here. <coughs> Isaiah was back here. Where he at? Isaiah right here, right? So Isaiah was around in 721 uh, BC, right? Nebuchadnezzar came around. Isaiah dead and gone, right? Nebuchadnezzar came around. About 605, you know what I'm saying, uh, B.C. Huh? It, yeah. it counts backwards. Because it's you know before, what I'm saying? before the Messiah. B.C. counts backwards. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's over 100 years later. Right? Over 100 years. He dead and gone. Over 100 years later, Nebuchadnezzar pop up. But watch how before Nebuchadnezzar was even thought of, before he was born, before anybody even thought to name anybody Nebuchadnezzar, Watch how, how uh, uh, Isaiah prophesied about this very man. And you just let me know if what he's saying line up with what we know about Nebuchadnezzar so far. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 4. Watch what the book says. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Right? The golden city. What, was, what, what, was, what color was his part of the statue in this dream? Gold. The, the head of the statue? Y'all remember it was gold. Right? He said, how did the golden city cease? Watch this. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. He said, the Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. Watch this. And the scepter of the rulers. Uh-huh. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted. Right? And none hinders. Look, didn't Nebuchadnezzar rule the nations in anger? In wrath? He had all these boys under his thumb. Right? Keep going. Watch this. The whole earth is at rest. Mm -hmm. And it's quiet. They break forth into singing. Yes, the fir trees rejoice at thee. And the cedars of Lebanon saying, since you are laid down, no feller is come up against us. Mm -hmm. Hell from beneath is moved from thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. Mm -hmm. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they that speak and say unto thee, art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pump is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and thy wor and the worms cover thee. Now look, this is saying that this king of Babylon, 
this one that used to run the world that ruled with wrath, all of a sudden he going to be brought down to the ground with the worms. Watch this. Keep going. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Who? Lucifer, son of the morning. Who ever heard of Lucifer? Who is Lucifer? That's what we've been taught, huh? We've been taught that Lucifer is the devil. Who is this talking about right now? Let's go back to the beginning. This is verse four. Well, let's see what it says. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Against who? <coughs> so this is telling you about the king of Babylon. And it says, oh, what? Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground? He Which said, oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground? This is talking about the king of Babylon. It's talking about Nebuchadnezzar. The whole world was given to Nebuchadnezzar. What we are about to read is about how Nebuchadnezzar gets cut down to the ground, just like this. Nebuchadnezzar is Lucifer. Right? Lucifer means day star. Right? So he says, hey, day star, in other words, sun, right? Hey, day star, this bright, this bright, a star that's bright enough, it shines in the daytime, right? So, hey, day star, son of the morning, right? In other words, child of the morning, right? How have you fallen down? In other words, you are the brightest thing. You had it. You were the one. You were the king of kings. How did you fall down? We never thought that was going to happen. Because that's how people looked at Nebuchadnezzar. They're looking like, man, this boy, can't nobody stop him. Can't nobody stop him. How is he going to fall down? But he does fall down. Right? What we got right here, let's go to Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. This is Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. That's right. Who said that? Who was that? Oh, yes, yeah, that's, that's Brother Daniel. That's right. Brother Daniel, you cheating, though. You know what I'm saying? You've been through the teaching before. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's right. The king of Babylon is Lucifer. Right? <coughs> but I'm going to take it even a step further for y'all. Y'all, Shua is Lucifer. Yeah, that mess you up, don't it? That thing mess your head up. Because it's like, wait a minute. You can't call y'all Shua the devil. The devil is not Lucifer. The devil has never been Lucifer. Right? Oh, oh we got grab uh grab revelations before we get daniel grab revelations chapter 14 is it 14 i want 13 maybe grab revelations chapter 13 give me verse uh mm, give me verse 12 it's revelation chapter 13 verse 12 watch what the book says <laughs> dragon ball z And he exercises all power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly room was That's here. 13 or 14? 13. That's 13? Yeah. That's 13, 12? Yeah. Give me maybe 14, 12. <sighs> That's about the reaper. Okay, then go me. Oh, give me 12. All right, give me 13. One. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw the beast rise up from the sea, having seven heads. Oh, what I, I don't know what I thought. Give me 12. One. Goodness gracious. I thought it would be more towards 20. Nah, I definitely. There appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman. There we go. Okay, so it's 12 that I want. So give me 12. Give me 12. 10. Revelation is 12. 10. Give me 12, 9. It's Revelation 12, 9. And the great devil, and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent. Look, hold on, look, look. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. That old serpent. Called the devil. He was called what? The devil. Or what? And Satan. Which and Lucifer. No, and Satan. Which deceived the whole world and was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. The book just gave you all his names. Dragon, old serpent, devil, Satan. Those are his names. Right? 
None of it has anything to do with Lucifer. That's what these people lie to us and teach. They, these people lie. They be, You're a Luciferian. That don't even mean <sighs> nothing. These people, you got whole little anti-religions that say, you know what, we worship Lucifer and all this stuff. We're Luciferians. They got these whole little temples. They don't even know what they're talking about. It don't even mean nothing. What they're really saying is we worship Nebuchadnezzar. They darn silly butts. But that's what people run around and do. Christians don't know what they're doing either. They don't know who they're worshiping either. Right? But Nebuchadnezzar testifies of Yahushua. When you're reading about Nebuchadnezzar, when they make him king of kings, when they give him rulership over all the world, right? That testifies of Yahushua. When they're talking about you got to bow down to him or you get cast into the fire, that's talking about Yahushua. Right? So when I say, really, Lucifer is Yahushua, that's what I mean. Right? The same way that, the same way that Moses is Yahushua. <clears throat> right? All the book testifies of Yahushua. Everybody has a, is an image. It's like a reflection of Yahushua. Right? And that's what we learn about when we look at the book. But Lucifer is not Satan. Right? Lucifer is talking about King of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Right? Let's prove that out. This is uh, Daniel chapter 4. This is verse 1. <coughs> These people taught us all types of stuff. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. That's right. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought towards me. Mm -hmm. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was in the rest of my house and flourishing in my palace. Look, this is Nebuchadnezzar talking to y'all. This him. He writing in his own handwriting in the book of Daniel. He had, he had there, he was like, let me get a chapter. You know what I'm saying? Then you let me get a check. Hey, I never connected and seen some things. So look, you got you to keep reminding yourself what he's been through. I'm the man running the show. I take over whatever I take. The Hebrew guy can't stay, stop me just like the rest of these guys couldn't stop me. I take over their stuff, right? I take some of the Hebrew people. They interpret the dream for me. Oh, dang, they got kind of real. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen no guy that interpret the dream like that. Okay, cool. My dream is interpreted. I keep going. I build a statue because I'm feeling myself. You better bow down to it. You don't bow down to it. You go into a fire. I put these boys into a fire. They worship the same God as Daniel. Them boys is okay. I make a decree and I say, don't you ever speak against they God. Anybody who speak against they God getting chopped up and thrown into a pit or thrown into a pile. Right? This is what he, this is what his experience has been. So now in the fourth chapter of Daniel, he writing a letter in his own handwriting. He writing a letter and he said what? Watch this. I, Nebuchadnezzar. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house. In Look, I'm in my house chilling. I'm about to translate it for y'all. Watch this. And I'm flourishing in my palace. I'm feeling good. You know what I'm saying? Everything's going well. He's not telling you, oh, I've been down. You know, a lot of people, they testimony. You go to church and they get the testimony. They get the mic. You know what I'm saying? The mic. I can't. I need a mic right here. You know what I'm saying? They usually got the, like the curved mic that go like that. They move it to the side right here and they say, well... I just got a praise report. Uh, last week, I went to the doctor, and uh, they said I had uh, palips on my, my left gold bladder, you know, and, uh, and they said that uh, I might have to have surgery. Well, I, I wanted a second opinion because I said, God, God has the final say. So I went, I got a second opinion. And then at this, at this part, this is when they start crying. They start getting all dramatic. And, and the whole church going to start clapping. Woo! Praise Jesus! Right, 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 right. And they said, I got the second opinion. Pallets were gold. Jesus! Go! Right? They praise report always going to take you down to like, it was the end. I thought it was over. Right? Look at how his is. His is not, look, it was bad for me. It was rough. He, he started his off like, yo, 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 let me tell you something. Everything looking good around here. You know what I'm saying? I was in the house, chilling. Oh, man, it's looking lovely. I'm flourishing, still getting money. Right? Watch this. Keep going. I saw a dream which made me afraid. And right. The, and the thoughts upon my bed and the, and the visions of my head troubled me. Right. Then I had a dream in my rich house, money all over the place. 
had a bad dream. That thing troubled me a little bit. Make me feel a little something, something. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Mm -hmm. Then came in the magicians and the astrologers, the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. Mm -hmm. And I told the dream, I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Right. So I called my people in here. And I was like, man, tell me what this dream meant. So I told them, but they couldn't really figure out what the dream meant. I'm sitting here stuck still. So me, Nebuchadnezzar, what did I do? But at the last, Daniel came in before me. My boy, Daniel, <clears throat> he the one who told me about my last dream. So my man Daniel came before me. In other words, he came in front of me, right? What Who, you got, Daniel? Whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom the spirit of the holy gods, and before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you, and no secret troubles you, tell me the vision of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Mm -hmm. Thus were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, it's a tree. Man. That thing was in the middle of the land. Just like one tree, you got to picture it. It's just one tree in the middle of everything. And what was happening on that tree? And the height thereof was great. Man, that was a big old tree. Just in the middle of the land. Super tall tree. What else happened? The tree grew and was strong. And the it height kept thereof growing. reached unto heaven and the sight thereof to no end. The height was all the way in the sky. To, to the end of all the earth. Right? And the what? In the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. He said, and it stretched where you can't even see it into the end of the land. Right? Keep going. The leaves thereof were fair and the fruit thereof much. And it was meat for all. The beasts of the field and shadow under it and the birds and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bowls thereof. And all flesh was fed of it. Mm hmm. So he said this tree provided for everybody. The leaves look great. Everything looked great about this tree. What else? I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher, and the holy one came down from heaven. A watcher, when they say watcher, it's talking about an angel, right? So an angel, and what? And the holy one came down from heaven. Okay, what else? And he cried aloud and said thus, hew down the tree and cut off his branches, take off the leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass. In the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be as the beast in the grass of the earth. So the watcher came by and he said, cut down the tree. Let everything that's getting the protection of his tree run away. And then take the stump of the tree. You know how you, you know, so you ever seen like on 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 you know what I'm saying on social media or on cartoons or something, they chop down the tree, and then you got the little stump of the tree. He said, after you get the stump of the tree, cover it with what? Uh, I think iron and brass. With brass, right? Brass. He said, cover it with brass. That makes it so that stump of the tree can't regrow at all. So you, you make it and you stick it that way. It's stuck, right? Keep going. <clears throat> let his heart be changed from man's. And let, let his beast... heart, right? It's been talking about a tree so far. He said, let his heart what? Be changed from man's and let a beast heart be given unto him. Now you got the heart of a beast. Right. Keep going. We on look. Nebuchadnezzar don't know what this dream is talking about. Keep going. Watch this. And let seven times pass over him. Mm hmm. This matter is by decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he will and sets up over it the beast of men. That's right. Keep going uh, at, at the beast besets of men, besets of men. Sorry. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen now, O Belteshazzar. Declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation. Mm -hmm. But you are able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Mm -hmm. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. And the king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation trouble you. Belteshazzar answered and said, my lord. The dream be to them that hate thee in the interpretation thereof thine enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew and was strong, whose height reached to the heaven mm -hmm. and the sight thereof of all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit were much. And in it was all food for all mm -hmm. under which the beasts of the field dwelt and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. Mm -hmm. 
It is you, O king. He said, you are the tree, O king. So this big old tree that was stretching over everything, providing for everybody. Everybody was chilling under this tree, provided shade, provided food. Everybody was going to this big old tree that, that was in the middle of the land, stretched out to the end of the land. You didn't see an end to it. They looking at the Babylonian empire like, man, this thing gonna last forever. That's what the tree represents. He said, oh, that, that tree, that tree is you. What else? It is you, O king, that are grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown to reach unto heaven and your dominion to the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. And whereas the king saw a watcher and the holy one coming down from heaven and saying, hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let there be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. Mm -hmm. And this is the decree of the Most High, which has come up upon my lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he will. Right. So pay attention to what he said now. He said, listen, you remember the part of the vision that said that somebody was going to have a heart like an animal, like a beast? Talking about you too, King Nebuchadnezzar. What's going to happen is they're going to drive you from being around men. But while you up in your castle and everything looking good, somebody going to make you want to go out there and run with animals. You're going to be eating grass. Do you remember when Isaiah was prophesying? Isaiah said, what brought you down to the worms? This is what Isaiah was talking about, right? He's going to eat grass. What being grass? Cows. Cows, too. Well, yeah, well yeah. I guess, you know what I'm saying? But in Texas, what, uh, be, in, what be in the grass? I thought you meant what be eating grass. No, what be in the grass? Oh, you know, worms. And be worms up in there. And... Got all types of bugs and worms up in there. <laughs> what? Dogs do boo-boo in the grass. Right? But that's what happened. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Let's see what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. And they Remember, commanded... Nebuchadnezzar is the one that's delivering this message. Keep going. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree and the roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, O king, let thy counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for thy, the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and the honor of my majesty? Look, so Nebuchadnezzar said, 12 months after having his dream, right? Daniel told him, he was like, listen, this, this is about you. You about to be messed up. But listen, all you need to do is start taking care of the poor. Pretty much turn from the stuff you're doing, start taking care of the poor, poor being generous, you'll be all right. He said, it'll prolong your tranquility. So in other words, it's going to happen, but at least you will have a longer amount of time if you do these things. So then a year later, Nebuchadnezzar walking around and he looking like, man, this is good, man. It looks good in here, boy. And he start bragging about it. Watch, watch what he said. Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might and my power in the honor of my majesty? Mm -hmm. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from you and they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thou, thou know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. And gives it to him, whoever he will. So that's the same thing he heard a year ago for his dream. Right? So the, the, the voice that came from, from the sky, it, it reminded him of the dream. Then watch what happened to Nebuchadnezzar right after that. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagles' fetters. And his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days... I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned to me. Mm -hmm. And I bless the Most High and I praise and honored him that lives forever, whose dominion is everlasting dominion and the kingdom is from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And all the inhabitants of the earth are uh, reputed as nothing. 
and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitations of the earth and none can stay his hand nor say unto him what are you doing so you see the praise that he give to our god he's sitting there he walking he went crazy is what happened seven, right seven he said years. this stuff and he is looking like he is looking like he is great stuff that i built by my hand voice came down to him spoke to him and he just went crazy so he ran out and just start walking around with the beast for seven years Seven years, these people couldn't get him back sane. This is the king. Seven years, this man just walking around, going crazy. Nails super long. His hair all nappy and long. It looked like feathers because his hair, his hair is so long that it's like sticking together and dirty and nasty. So it looked like feathers is on him. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, them, them Persians, they hairy. You know what I'm saying? So it, his stuff is just, you know what I'm saying? And like hair. Huh? He's Chaldean. He's Chaldean. Probably Babylon. You think that is not a person? They're the same. I don't know, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Whatever he was, I believe them people was hairy. So he got the, you know what I'm saying. He got the little things, you know what I'm saying, coming out, and that thing looked like eagle's feathers. You know what I'm saying, long nail, and he just going out there eating. You know what I'm saying, eating like an animal. He out there with the oxen, just chilling with them, like these white folks that be on the videos messing with the alligators and messing with the, you know what I'm saying, with the beasts and all that. He like one of them, except he's not well kept. He looked crazy out there. But he out there with the animals, just living like an animal. And you can imagine people probably trying to talk to him like, King, what you on? Ah, you know what I'm saying? So they looking at him. They looking like, man, I lost call. You, you're not even proud of the man no more. You used to be proud of him like, man, my king will kill anybody king. Then the man, get, he get caught. You know what I'm saying? Paparazzi catch him out there. You know what I'm saying? With the animals and everything. It's like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Once he hit the tabloids, it's like, nah, ain't, you know nah, we got a new king now. Right? So he out there, seven years, he out there running around. Seven years, seven years. Then at the end of the seven years, he look up. And the Most High God give him his understanding again. And he praised the Most High God. Right? That's the end of the chapter. Keep going. Watch and this. at the same time, my reason returned unto me. Look, at the same time, my reason returned unto me. Another, that's how he's telling you, I went crazy. Right? I went crazy. We talked a little bit about about the 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 uh, uh, the emotional distress that we can go through, right? But this is another part of it. Today, this is a mental illness. This is a man. They put him in a straight jacket. And they're gonna lock him into the room. How did he get cured? First of all, how long did it take him to get cured? Seven years. Seven years. He had to deal with this thing. They ain't had no pills. They ain't had nothing they can give him. You know what I'm saying? They ain't had. They ain't had no therapist. I like to imagine them people are trying to talk to him too. I'm like, King, man, look. Man, no, keep them people back. Don't let them see the king like this. Them back. King, what is you doing out here with the. Let's go. Come on. Get, try to get him. Try to get him. Rawr. You know what I'm saying? He's scratching them and all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? They look like this man is crazy. I can't shoot him because that's, that's still a king. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, a little leash on him, put him in the backyard. You know what I'm saying? Let's forget it. You know what I'm saying? We'll leave him there. Seven years came by, that man looked up, and his reason returned to him. After he praised the Most High God, his understanding came back. He came back like, oh, okay, I get it. Most High God was trying to show me that he runs this thing, not me. He let me have everything just to show me that he runs it, not me. Keep going, watch this. My honor and my bright, my honor and brightness returned unto me and my counselors and my Lord sought unto me and I was established in my kingdom and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. When he says abase, he's able to make them low, just like he did to Nebuchadnezzar. So when we read about old Lucifer, son of a morning talking about nebuchadnezzar that's when they say who are you that that rule the nations with wrath now everybody looking at you like how you become like us right that's that seven years that nebuchadnezzar was walking around like an animal you're like boy you made us walk around like animals you made us slaves now you just like us yo but crazy right nebuchadnezzar after that got restored he got his kingdom back he got more excellency, but only after he repented and he turned to the Most High God. So most, now Nebuchadnezzar served the Most High God, right? 
even that testified Yahushua. But Yahushua had to be brought low too. Yahushua, he was with he was he was with with the Father in heaven. You know what I mean? He was one with the Father. He had to separate himself and make himself low, like a become man. a regular human being. You know what I'm saying? Good as a darn good as a darn animal. Until at the very end, right before he is about to be, uh, you know what I'm saying, put to death, he looked up to the Most High God. You know what he said to him? It is done. He said, give me the glory like, like I had with you in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right? A lot of people don't know this, but Nebuchadnezzar, man, you think you're reading about Nebuchadnezzar, you're reading about Yahushua. Whole book testifying Yahushua. That's the end of the chapter? Mm-hmm. All right. How much time we got? Let me see. 120. We, we can end it. Next week, what we going to talk about, next week, we probably going to introduce ourselves to Zedekiah a little bit. Then we'll jump into Ezekiel. You know what I'm saying? We'll jump into the prophet Ezekiel. We'll see how Ezekiel, look, when Ezekiel kicked this thing off, oh, it get hot and heavy right from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Some of these prophets, they like to slow walk you into it. Not Ezekiel. He gonna start off like, look, man, I saw some wild stuff. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you, I saw wheels and darn cherubim <laughs> and all types of look. I saw some wild stuff. His kick off tough. You know what I'm saying? So, and then after, and Ezekiel was all go. It's all go. Once Ezekiel, it kick off, Ezekiel was one that really stuck with me when I first started to understand. To me, his is like he's the most well written. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Out of out of out of all the prophet books, his is the best written. It's like in terms of the flow of it and everything, his is to me is the best written. You know what I'm saying? So uh we uh we skipped around a lot in Jeremiah, and there's still a lot of other Jeremiah that we're gonna have to read, but we still we skipped around a lot in Jeremiah, but you're gonna be able to see with Ezekiel, we're gonna be able to for the most part just read straight through. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't just Ezekiel because Ezekiel one of the priests too. Ezekiel was a priest too. Mm. Yeah, Ezekiel was a priest too. Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Any questions? Any questions online? Any questions in the room? Oh. What you got? Here we go. Hang on, I'm done. Um. Hmm. You got I dropped 30 points. Cut it out, boy. What? You got a question, boy? All right. Uh, what we got? What is that? No question? Questions. No question, Grace. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's pray out.